cattle, so we were really just reaching out and buying anything we could get our hands on. And the cattle market was through the roof at the time that we came here, but we couldn't afford to have the paddocks empty any longer because the grass was already so high. We really wanted to jump on it and utilise it while we are in that growing season. We've got 300 here at the moment. Kimberly Shorthorns, we've got some Wagyu Wagyus. and some Brahmin. Brahmin. And uh, what have we got? Brangus, Brangus steers as well. So a bit of everything. Yeah, see how far we can push the numbers. If we can get to 600 animals here, it'd be amazing. You've got a great range of genetics available. There's an ocean of semen out there, to, pardon the pun, available to, uh, to the industry, you know, all, all types of breeds. You can access genetics from other countries, subject to health requirements. Um, and, and you can use the anal same animal in multiple herds at the same time. So what the big change has been in the last 10 years, South American technology called fixed time AI has been adapted to the Australian environment and we can now do large mobs of cattle pre-synchronised and have a four hour window to do the AI. So it, it means you can treat mobs of cattle as a mob, get them inseminated and get them out of the road because most extensive grazing properties don't have good paddock feed close to yards to hold cattle, draft them and look at them for you know a week or two if you do a different form of synchrony or three weeks if you do no synchrony. FTAI involves the use of implant in the cow along with a, a range of hormone injections. So they get treated on what we call day zero. They get the implant withdrawn and some more injections on day eight, again on day nine and all get inseminated on day 10 within a four hour window. So if you do everything right and your semen quality is up to standard, um, we budget on a 50% conception rate, which is comparable to natural mating. Um, no one gets a bull and, and puts him with a herd just for a month to get everything in calf. So you're always going to get returns. At the time, my brother-in-law just had a, um, or his wife had just had a, a little baby and she's only a tiny little thing and she was having trouble getting her breast milk in. So the doctors gave her these tablets to help her bring her milk in and I said, give us a look. I grabbed the jar of these tablets and on the side of the jar, the main ingredient in that is fenugreek. So now we have got the plant fenugreek, which is a legume, fixes nitrogen. We're putting it in at home in our dairy mixes and, and, um, and then leaving it out. And we can, I love working with dairy farmers because you get instant feedback. They put the animals on, on the pastures and they bang. The milk, you can go up or down very quickly on, on what you do. So we can have the ability to measure. And I reckon this is where things get really fun and exciting is because we can use a plant like fenugreek to spike production without, you know, adding, when we're just, you know, it's fixing nitrogen, it's doing a number of things. If you give yourself three to five years, because, you know, we can do a lot of damage in one year, you can undo things really quickly and it can take time, but, um, that can be sped up to um, rainfall, temperature, the more rainfall, I think you guys here up here have got a, an ability to really speed this up because you get a lot of rain and you get a lot of warm and sunlight so we can grow more plants um, because at the end of the day plants is what builds soil, their roots. I feel that people should learn from other people and, and you need like-minded people together you know like there's already been two or three couples that have asked if they could call you know or come and visit again or you know to stay in touch which i think is great because that's how we learn people do different things and they say well this worked for me and how'd you go i try this and i think anything that ends in the four letters c-i-d-e side is probably not one you should be using because side means death and so fungicide insecticide on the seed you're putting that on there to kill things so I like to think of it changed. Instead of trying to kill things every day, let's just try and make things grow better. We always try and put minerals, microbes, and a carbon source on the seed or you know with the plants, um, so we can get good nutrition around that seed. And when you see people talking about that, you know they've had problems with say an insect or a disease, they've been using all these chemicals on it and they can't control it, and now they've implemented you know diversity and, and nutrition and getting biology right, and these these symptoms start disappearing. Um, that's when it gets really exciting and we can start to be more profitable. Lots of bugs, which is great. Like I went in there the other day and there were aphids on the plants, but you sit there for 10 minutes and then you see the ladybugs and the spiders and everything is alive. And it so, looks lush. It looks yeah. like we could eat it. It looks like a salad. <laughs> yeah. So it is exciting and I'd, I'd like to see, yeah, 
that put over the whole place. I don't want to fertilise. I don't want to yeah, do any of that stuff that people say you've got to do. I mean, we minimal inputs on our cattle too. Like we, they come in, we just give them a Dectamax and have a bit of a quarantine process, I suppose. Like they'll stay in the yards on a bit of hay for for 24 hours and then out they go. And we don't sort of touch them again unless we do a bit of a weigh up on them, but they don't get, you know, a worming every three months or anything like that. Would also like to implement some trees, tree planting in the paddocks for shade and wind breaks. And I think when people start being more conscious of how their food is grown and produced, um, if we can grow it more with more nutrition and, and you know, um, we've got a healthier product to sell for, for people as well.